Statistics and Excel, average deviation, standard deviation, and variance for a population with salary data. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, and looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey's saying. So get one, because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you could get right to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab being a blank worksheet with just our data in it so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Now if you don't have this data you could just type it in here it's not a very long data set you can create your own data set using techniques we've seen in prior presentations you can also check out Kaggle K-A-G-G-L-E dot com for other practice data sets. Let's go to the first tab, the example tab, to get an idea of what we will be doing. We've been diving in in a little more depth on the equations for our statistical analysis, whereas before that point, we were looking at things from more of an intuitive standpoint. So we talked about the mean equation, and then we wanted to think about equations that have to do with the spread of data, the standard one being the standard deviation, as well as the variance. Last time, last practice problem, we took a very simple data set so that we can go through these concepts thinking about the more intuitive average deviation and then move into the standard deviation and the variance. We'll do a similar thing here, however, now taking a bit more complex uh, of a data set. So let's take a look at it. Let's go to the blank tab. This is our salary data set once again on uh, the left hand side representing wages for say a corporation. We're imagining that this is not a sample but the entire population of the data. So I'm gonna delete this Kaggle thing. I'm gonna hold control, scroll in a bit. So we're zoomed in to like 235. Let's put a table around the data, put in our, our cell in the data somewhere. Insert tab up top, tables, and create the table, the dancing ants. Do their, do their voodoo magic dance around the cells, and there is our table. Let's make a skinny B column, skinny B, making it go down like so, and then we will uh, do some of our standard statistical analysis, right? So now we can, of course, sort the data if we wanna see it from lowest to highest, for example, or highest to lowest, and we could switch it from highest to lowest if we wanted uh, to do that and we can now do our normal calculations. So our statistical calculations include the mean or average. Let's first format all of our cells to that. I've skipped that what I normally do. Let's put our cursor on the triangle, right click the entire worksheet, and then format the cells. 
and I like to go with currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, no dollar sign, and we don't need any decimals at this time. We'll add them as needed when the cells uh, cull for them. So there we have it. I'll make the salary white up top so we could see that. Oop, not all the data. Undo. I want to put the header. I'm going to go to the font tab and make that white. And let's make it all bold too. Everything needs to be bold. All right, so now we're gonna make this large. And so we've got the average or the mean, and then we can do the min, we can do uh, Q1, quartile one, we can do the median, which is also quartile two, we can do quartile three, we could do the max. Uh, and so let's do those. So we've got the average is gonna be equal to, I'm gonna do this quick because we've seen it a few times in the past just simply using our average function, double click in the function, selecting the data with it in a table. I can just select the down arrow, dancing ants, just around the data, working their magic and doing the calculation. So then in the min equals the min, I'm gonna do control shift to put the bracket or, or shift nine to put the bracket and then select the, the data so that's the smallest number in the data set. Q1, I can do equals uh, quartile, quartile. I'm gonna pick the first quartile option, or you could just hit tab, because it's on the top, tab. And then, I could and then I could select the data. This one has one other argument. You'll recall, I gotta hit a comma and say I want the one standing for quartile number one. And then, not 10, one. And then the median could be quartile two, or we use the median function, which is probably more common, tab, selecting the data, and enter. Quartile three equals quartile three, tab, selecting the data. This time I need a comma, not a one, but a three, because I'm on quartile three. And the max equals the max, shift nine, and data, so there's our standard, our standard data calculations right there. Let's put some uh, brackets around this. We'll say this is gonna be uh, home tab, font group, bracketing it, borders, and let's make it our blue drop down. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors, standard. There's the blue, there it is, boom. And then we could calculate the average using the mean or average uh, calculated, or we calculated manual method, let's say, which would simply be our formula of, I'll just pull over the quick formula here, something like this, right? There's our formula. So we're gonna take, we're gonna sum, we're gonna sum all these up, which are the X's, and then sum everything up and divide by the N or the number of items, right? So we're just all the, all that is doing is saying we're going to sum everything up. We'll make this in a table format equals the SUM, the most famous of functions, and selecting that, and then the count, the count or N, the number of data. We could do that with an equals the count function. Counting it out, there's 51 of them, and then we can give us the, uh, so we're going to divide, divide, which gives, uh, hold on a sec, I gotta hit. It's beeping at me. Stop beeping at me. We need a divide, and that's gonna be the mean. And so this equals then this divided by the 51, and we get the same number here as we calculated up there, but we did it manually. Now let's go to the home, or kind of manually. <laughs> home tab, font group, underline it. Let's make this like a header column home tab, font group, I'll make it black and white. I'll make this blue and bordered. Home tab, font group, border blue. Okay, so now let's make a histogram. We could do a histogram out of, of this data. So let's say selecting the data, insert, and let's go, hold on, is that the data selected? Is it, yeah, I think so, insert, and then charts histogram. So here's our data histogram. 
and it's got let's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven I'm gonna change the buckets to eleven to have have it match what I have in my practice so I'm gonna double click the buckets and let's just make eleven bins for whatever so now we've now we've got our histogram looking like this of our data the histogram giving us an idea of the spread remembering that the the mean is that point that 71 around here is that point that if you think of it as like a teeter-totter and you put the fulcrum in here then it would basically be kind of uh, centering on that uh, teeter-totter point okay so now let's do the variance so and and the 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 standard let's do the average deviation and then we'll go to the the, the standard deviation so we'll start with the average i'm going to do this fairly quickly because we saw it before we're just using a different data set now let's actually copy the data set over let's let's copy all of column a selecting all of column a right click and copy i'm going to put that over to the side in column m right click and paste it just normal table has been input implemented and then i want a skinny in putting my cursor between the n o no no and put the n smaller so you emphasize the o no and then we're going to say that uh this is going to be the average deviation and i'll just put my formula in here so I won't retype the formula. I'm just going to copy and paste it. If you want to copy that formula and type it into Excel, remember you can do that by going to the insert tab, making an equation, and then using the ink, ink item here is the easier way to kind of put it in place. So I'm going to make it uh, orange so it looks a little different. And maybe, so there we go. Okay, let's make this this black and white insert home i mean font group black and white on the letters okay so now uh now i'm going to take my data and actually i should have put my data on the other side of the of here so i'm going to take this whole column and i could drag it or cut it i'm going to right click and cut it and then let's put it over here in column Q, right click and paste. That looks better. And then I can delete this column M and N, right click and delete. And so let's do that. And then I can make a skinny N. So the N is skinny again. <laughs> All right, so now uh, we'll do our average, average deviation. So I would compare that then to the mean so here's the mean. The mean is going to be equal to, I could do it this way, average, double click of all of this, right? We get to that same number we got to here. So there's our mean. And then I'm going to say, take the difference, difference from every point to the middle point, the mean. So that's the 84,000 minus the 71. And then this is where it's where it's a little bit more simplified versus the standard deviation. Instead, I'm using the average deviation, which is spelled wrong, but we're going to say this is the absolute value. And let's wrap the text on the headers, home tab, alignment, wrapping the text, centering it. Absolute value is a fun formula equals ABS, abs. So abs, the abs function has nothing to do with your abs. So don't feel like it's going to help you to like work out your abs. Although, you know, who knows, but I'm going to go into my table here and then I'm going to make a, a total column In the table styles. We're going to add the, the total. I could over here. I could take my average again if I wanted to. I'm just going to put an average here on here. I'm going to put my count. So I'm going to say count them, please. And then here, I'm going to sum up the differences. So notice if I sum them up, I still get to zero. That might have been less apparent 
in the prior presentation, but notice that if the middle point, if the average is 71,498, and I take the difference of every point from the average, then I'm still going to get positive and negative numbers that should add up to zero in essence, right? And then this is the sum function. We're summing up all of the differences, which we've now made absolute so that we don't have. So now I'm looking at the, the, the distance from the middle point without negative numbers. So then I can calculate the average deviation. Let's say I'll say this equals the average deviation. Let's see if I can average. There should be a G in there somewhere. And so let's say, so let's make this like black and white. Home tab, font group, black, white. All right, so now I'm going to take, this is the sum of the distance from the mean, which is simply equal to that 9790. And then I'm going to divide that by, I'm going to say that little thing and divide, I think it's a comma, right? <laughs> the count, the count. And then, and that's N in our formula. So now we're, we've got the numerator, we summed it up, we took the absolute value, we're dividing by N, the count. So we counted them to be 51, meaning one, two, three, four, there's 51 of these items. So equals 51, underline, home tab, font group, underline, and this is going to be the average deviation, which is equal to the 9790 divided by the 51 can add some decimals, home tab, uh, alignment, or font group, add decimals, and there we have it. Let's make it blue and bold, or blue and uh, home tab, font group, blue and bordered, or bordered blue, whichever way you want to say it. So that's kind of the intuitive way of doing it, right? So now let's compare that again to the, to the variance and the standard deviation, which is which is basically our default calculations for measuring this kind of average distance in essence from the middle point or mean. So I'm gonna make a skinny S and let's do this again, skinny S. I'll just copy over these formulas. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be the variance and I'm just gonna copy this formula over because we've seen it before, but if you wanna type the formula you could once again go into the insert tab equation and then ink it in here so you can type in stuff and it'll do it up top. So that's really cool, really neat. I, I thought it was very nice. Uh, so everybody should be impressed by that, I feel like. And then there's a the home tab, uh, font group. This is, should be black and white. And then down here, we've got the standard deviation and again i'll make this black and white home tab font group black white and we'll copy that one in and notice that the standard deviation is basically this whole thing that's that's underneath is the variance and then and that's why it's represented by a sigma squared versus a sigma so we're going to calculate the variance and then move to the standard deviation. So let's make a skinny X, skinny X. And then we'll say, we're gonna copy this uh, column O. Let's copy column O, actually the whole column. Uh, yeah, well, let's just copy the data. I'll just copy the data in column O and we'll recreate our table. I don't want the total yet because I'm gonna redo it. And then I'm gonna put that in column Y why? Because that's just where we landed. I'll just paste it one, two, three to start off with. And then I'll put a table around it. I'm going to just put my cursor in the cell and then insert tab tables, dancing ants working their magic, their voodoo dance coming up with that. And then the, we're going to compare it to the mean again. So the mean equal to the average tab of the data of data not the not the header just the data boom that's our same average or mean we got over here and then we'll have the difference difference this is the same thing up until this point the 84,000 minus the 71,498 we have our differences 
but we end up with those negative numbers. We want to remove the negatives, but we're not going to do it with absolute value this time. We're going to square a uh, squared, which does get rid of the negatives, but also leaves us with the problem that we squared everything, which means that's the next step is going to take the absolute value, right? So I could then say this is going to be equal to the, the difference squared or carrot uh, shift six to the power of two or squared enter so there we have it and so uh so then let's put our totals down below so i'm going to go into my table again table design and the table style options let's put our totals down below again i can do this is my average let's do an average let's do a count here let's say count it up so there's 51 and then here we will do the sum so it sums up to zero just like before but now i have the sum over here of the squared uh differences right so so that removed the negative but it also squared everything so now what i can do is say since you know i've been going in my formula right so we summed up the difference but now squared it instead of taking the absolute value now we're going to divide it by uh, the number which will give us the variance then we'll take the square root which will give us the standard deviation all right so let's do that we're going to say right, this is going to be the squared difference from the mean i'll just retype this in equals this number and i'm going to divide that by so divide i put that in there so i could put a divide sign and it doesn't beep at me divide by the count which we're representing in our formula with an N. So that equals to this cell, which is what we counted. That just counts everything in, in the table that's in column Z. Let's put an underline under it, home tab, font group, underline. So then we have the variance, variance, which is represented as sigma squared oftentimes. So I can then go to my insert tab, symbols, and it would be under normal text, Greek and Gothic. And if you've been using it, it'll be down here and recently used. So I'll just say Sigma, insert it. Okay, I need a square. So I'm going to put a two, enter. It did some weird formatting thing. So I'm going to go back to the first tab. I want this at 11. So that two, I'm going to highlight it and it does some crazy 26, put it down to two. But then... I'm going to highlight just the two, right click, format the cells, and make it subscript. Boom. All right. So <laughs> there, I have to have the fancy symbols. This divided by this. So there we have it. There's our variance. And then we have the standard deviation. Standard deviation, which is just the sigma then. Insert equation. Oh, not that equation. K paso, undo what happened. Do it again. Insert the symbol of a sigma. Insert. Boom. All right. So this is going to be, and then, and now we need the, the square root, which is the formula equals SQ square root. This one, SQRT of that is going to give us this two seven and you can see it's it's going to be greater than than the number we get to with our uh with our average deviation right and so these numbers uh will make more sense when you're making comparisons of them of of other data sets right so when you're comparing the variance of two data sets they make so we'll we'll get into more of that later but right now we could just we'll just get through the calculations of them so i'm going to go to the home tab number and we'll add some decimals let's put some blue borders around this home tab font group border and blue and so this of course is the one that we're going to be using more often and again notice how it's kind of useful to be able to do this in a table format right you got the formula over here sometimes plug in the algebra into the formula is nice but sometimes it's nice to see 
you know, the, the data, f- like a table format, like a tax return, right? Because then you're actually kind of breaking out the calculations step by step. And some of those steps, some of the sub calculations can, can give you better insights sometimes. Uh, and also they, they might be useful numbers in and of themselves, depending on what it is uh, you're doing. However, let's also calculate it with Excel here. So I'm gonna scroll down and we'll do the standard deviation. So standard deviation of the population with Excel. And I'm emphasizing here that we're thinking about this as the entire population, because if you say equals ST, there's the standard deviation STDEV for the population versus the sample. Right now we're focused on the population. So I'm gonna select that one and then our entire data set in column Y and boom. So if I add a couple decimals, home tab, number group, couple decimals, we get uh, the same number here. If I took the variance, the variance of a popu population that would be equal to the VA so we want the variance VAR of the population double clicking that function and then selecting the entire data set we get our number here which matches out let's do the same thing for the sample just to be able to compare and contrast standard DV deviation for a sample sample I'm messing up my capitals in lowercase but equals the the standard for the sample this time and we'll select all of our data in column Y and we can add a couple decimals just to match it up to what we did up top home tab Uh, numbers adding a couple decimals you can see it's not exactly the same as we have up top for the population we'll talk more about that later and then we've got the variance of a population of a sample equals the VA so we have the VAR for the sample selecting our data in column Y and there we have it we can see it's not exactly the same as for the population we'll talk more about that in future presentations let's select this home tab font group border and blue let's make this one yellow just because we're not that's kind of like not exactly what we're doing yet but we just wanted to point that out that we'll move to in future presentations let's check the spelling viewed review tab spelling variance is spelled wrong change it okay and there we have it.